things are really hotting up in the semiconductor industry space and of course AMD is slowly losing ground to Intel and a lot of AMD investors are concerned. So the question is, what is the company worth? And more importantly, what are those fundamentals looking like? Now, AMD, just like many other companies in this sector, have been facing their own challenges over the last year. In addition to the supply chain constraints, one of the big issues is, of course, falling margins. And AMD has not been spared in this regard. In fact, their margins are down drastically over the last year. AMD's profit margins are down from 26% to 10% percent in the last year and it remains to be seen exactly what the impact of this is going to be on the financials over the next year however the company is of course looking forward and remains very optimistic and upbeat about future potential whether or not that optimism is going to play out in the financials remains to be seen but of course we have to lean into those fundamentals and see exactly how the company and the stock is positioned based on the past performance. And speaking of the company's past fundamental performance, if you wanna quickly screen stocks and have a look at how they've performed historically in terms of their financial reporting, there isn't really too many easy ways to do it, which is why myself and Davi created StockScreen.app. It is a game changer for the industry and it's a piece of software that we're gonna be releasing later this year. So if you wanna get notified as soon as we make this available to the public, go to StockScreen.app and sign up for the early waiting list. As I've mentioned so many times before here on the channel, making money and preserving capital is really all about knowing your numbers. It is about leaning into those fundamentals and making sure you're not investing into zombie companies or investing into companies at unrealistic valuations. So you definitely wanna go check out StockScreen.app. It is our exclusive software that is gonna be a game changer for the industry. Make sure you check it out. Okay, so let's jump into StockScreen.app and let's have a look at AMD and see exactly where the stock is at. Let's have a look at some of those financials and see where the valuation is on the stock. Now, looking at AMD, they are currently trading at $74.99 and I'm just gonna move this date slider back and have a look at the historicals. So if we move back to 2021, the stock traded up at 153.76 and it has since fallen back quite sharply. Of course, the stock, like I said, is currently trading at 74.99. It fell pretty aggressively over the last couple of months. Now, looking at that P ratio, it is sitting at 41.46. Price to book most recent quarter is sitting at 2.04. Price to sell 4.7, and price to free cash flow is sitting at 33.15. If we have a look at the analyst ratings, we've got zero sell, we've got 11 hold ratings, and seven buy ratings. So generally, the consensus from the analyst is somewhere between hold and buy with the majority of analysts sitting on a hold rating. If we look at the overview of the stock, market cap is 112.98 billion, enterprise value 108.44. Uh, looking at uh, the financial stats, if we lean into the trading 12 months, 22.83 billion on top line revenue, debt 2.89 billion, equity is sitting at 54.54, net income 2.27 billion, and cash most recent quarter, 5.59 billion. So a decent amount of cash on hand and free cash flow sitting at 3.41 billion. If we move across and look at the shares outstanding, 1.63 billion shares outstanding, the insider holding 0.35%. And if we look at the short interest, as you would expect, 1.99% uh, relatively small, Based on the current macro, I think that's probably accurate. And looking at the institutional holding, 72%. So very strong institutional holding in the stock. Uh, looking at the cash flow statement, which is, of course, my favorite part to lean into, they've actually done pretty well. If we look from 2019 up to uh, the trading 12 months, they went 493 million to 1.07 billion uh, to 3.52 to 3.82 billion on the operating cash flow. So year on year increases. Free cash flow, they went 276 million to 777 million to 3.22 billion to 3.41 billion. So huge increases for them. And then if we move across the balance sheet, uh, it has been really good for them on top line assets, six, eight, 12, and 67 billion. I mean, they've just seen astronomical asset growth. Equity, they've gone 2.8, 5.8, 7.5, and then check this out, 54.54 billion. So they've literally moved from 2.83 billion in equity in 2019 to 54 billion in equity uh, in the trading 12 months. That is just phenomenal, phenomenal growth. 
And looking at the income statement, top line revenue is looking really good. 6.7, 9.7, 16.4, 22.83. .3. And if we look at gross profit, they went 2.8, 4.3, 7.9, and then 10. Uh, 63 billion but of course this is where things start to really get under pressure a little bit the operating incomes and net incomes and i spoke about those falling margins this is where it's reflecting they've gone 631 million to 1.37 to 3.65 and then down to 2.62 on the operating income in terms of net income they went 341 million 2.4 3.16 2.27 and look at the earnings per share 0 0.29 2.03 2.59 and then down to 1.69 so definitely under pressure in the last trailing 12 months now as we move across just quickly having a look at our fundamental scoring uh, if we look at that p ratio it's way above our comfort level of 25 net margin just below 10 percent in fact it's almost unfair to mark them down but it is a rule so 9.96 they are marked down there and net equity is positive shareholder dilution of course present so that brings them to a fundamental score of 25 percent so really not strong on fundamentals if we look at the debt however they're doing exceptionally well debt to equity 5.3 percent so they're really carrying very little debt and i think this is one of the things that possibly makes them slightly more attractive than some of the competitors in the space they really are keeping their debt very very low current ratio 2.16 free uh, cash flow to debt 65 percent which is you know six times higher than our than our basically base level that we're looking for. And then looking at the momentum, they've really proven it over the last three years. Uh, top line revenue, gross profit, operating income, net income, operating cash flows and free cash flows all consistently up year on year. And then if we move across and have a look at our growth factors, return on equity 7.37, so below our benchmark of 10. Uh, if we look at that return on asset 4.73, which again is below our benchmark, uh, return on investor capital 44.86, so that's good, and compound annual growth rate on the earnings per share has been strong, uh, giving us a score of 50%. So if we look at our summaries, uh, fundamentals 25%, they definitely could be stronger there. If we're looking at debt strong, 100%, momentum strong, 100%, and growth well, 50% they definitely could be doing a little bit better on the growth factors. So of course the question now is what could the potential valuation be? So this is where we're going to lean into those uh, DCF calculations. We're going to lean into a free cash flow calculation. And of course if you do sign up for stockscreen.app you'll be able to do these calculations based on your own specific uh, risk analysis, based on your own thesis and of course play around with these numbers. So let's have a look at what I would work with. So P ratio 41, I'm gonna stick with that based purely on that's where they're currently valued, even though I think it is exceptionally high. And then in terms of the growth rate, the industry is predicting up potentially 12 to 16%. Uh, I think it's gonna be considerably lower than that. So we're gonna go two, four, and six on the growth rates. And that brings us out to an average buy price of 57.30. And of course the stock is currently trading at 74.79. So based purely on the, uh, the the DCF calculation, we will go and do a free cash flow calculation shortly. Um, I would say that the stock is somewhat overvalued. So if we come back and quickly have a look at our free cash flows. Free cash flow, uh, if we go on the free cash flow valuation 15, uh, we go 20, uh, and then we go 25, which is the absolute most I would be prepared to pay for the stock. We're coming out at an average buy price of 41.94. So if we look at our calculations here at the bottom, based on the DCF, I would say that we're probably 23% overvalued. And based on the free cash flow, we're probably about 44% overvalued. So definitely looking at the stock, I think the industry probably is a little bit overvalued at the moment. If you look at Intel, if you look at Nvidia, if you look at AMD, probably the only one that's presenting any kind of value at this moment is probably Intel. Um, and of course, there is a lot of risk factors uh, involved in Intel itself. So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider in that. Having said that, I don't think there's a perfect way to time the market. I don't think you can find an ideal entry point. But definitely, if I were looking at these stocks um, and I were looking at buy entry points, if I was looking based on a DCF, I'd say somewhere around $58 would be where I'd start looking at the stock very aggressively. 74, definitely for me. It's just too high at this moment in time, which by the way, I do hold some AMD stock, but I'm not going to be adding to my portfolio based on these current price points. Now, of course, the macro could change towards the end part of this year. 
yep. means that the stock could potentially move upwards in price aggressively. That being said, we are purely looking at the fundamentals. We're not looking at perception in the pricing. And based on fundamentals, I feel that the stock is somewhat overvalued. So guys, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, Money Tribe, please help me out. Hit that like button. It helps us rank these videos on YouTube. And of course, if you are new here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow us for more videos like this. We put out a piece of content like this every single day. And uh, we try and help you guys make sense of how to value companies, which numbers to look at. And also, we try and give you our experience and knowledge handed into these calculations. So definitely hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. And then finally, if you haven't signed up for StockScreen.app, make sure you go and do it now. It is a game changer for the industry. And uh, if you want to have a piece of software or a system or an app, should I say, that is going to give you easy to reach data, easy to reach fundamentals, quickly screening companies, then this is the application for you, StockScreen.app. And it is all web-based. We're also going to have a dedicated mobile version out. So definitely go and sign up right now.